Hey everybody, back with a new episode of Agent Carter. Last episode, Peggy finally realized she does need people in her life. So she's gonna move into Angie's building. And I think Jarvis is gonna get to be kind of her go-to guy, which I really love because their relationship's really fun. Uh, the SSR is kind of still not knowing that it's her, she's the woman they're kind of two steps behind. Uh, Sousa did find a key. Um, I think it's something, it, it was the guy who attacked them's key. So maybe they'll find something that Peggy hasn't. But at, at this point, they really um, are really behind her in finding everything out. But she might be in trouble or at least Howard might be because they found the scrapped bumper from the um, explosion implosion uh, and uh, it's gonna you know it's Howard's car so that that's not gonna look great but yeah this next episode is called time and tide and I looked it up because it sounded like a like a, a phrase an idiom or something and uh, it means, uh, like, don't delay, don't, time is a, of the essence. So I feel like that's a, a common occurrence in this show. Peggy is trying to stop these technologies that Howard has that have gotten out. I don't know if we're going to continue on with, like, the nitramine stuff or move into another direction. I mean, we keep kind of having these milk trucks explode so I don't know how much more is left but uh the the equations and his notes and all of that were taken so I, I don't think it's just gonna be just the nitramine I think there's more that they're gonna have to worry about but uh yeah we'll see time and tide so we gotta get going on something so let's get into it Damn, you know where she lives? Who is this? Shit. This can't be the best way. Let's open the door. Who is that? Clearly, you don't know the rules of the house. Is this not apartment 3F? Oh. Who are you? Jimmy. Just someone sneaking in. My girlfriend, Molly. She lives here, I swear. 5-5, <laughs> blonde, works at Bonwick Teller. Next one over. Would it be too much trouble if I could come to... Have a nice night. <laughs> Should I find something? Well, this is good. Sure this is nice. good for them. I didn't exactly get dragged out. Molly, you didn't. What can I say? Jimmy is very persuasive. Please go to your room and pack your things. Damn. I hope you had a splendid evening because it will be your last at the Griffith. This institution is not unlike Fort Knox. Or Alcatraz. Whether by force or trickery, this building is impenetrable. Do you believe that? I don't, actually. No building is impenetrable. We're in the license plate we pulled from the rocks on debris. Belongs to Howard Stark. Shit. I found that. Where's the rest of the car? Yeah, yeah. It just got a plate and a bumper. Boss. Stark was on the lamb when Roxxon went down. Do we really think he'd risk his freedom to blow it up? Or in whatever the hell happened? Somebody was driving that car. Uh-oh. Is Jarvis going to get in trouble? My landlady gave me an idea. Oh, splendid. Well, now if we can get an opinion from your butcher. Someone robbed Howard's impenetrable oh, she got I can an find idea. out how he got in. Perhaps I can trace where he went. Mr. Edwin Jarvis, you misplaced anything recently? Yes, I did lose a fountain pen on Fifth Avenue. How about the bumper off a of fleet master or anything like that? Just the bumper? We should find the entire car. I reported it stolen several days ago. Okay. Detective Davis at the Nineteenth Precinct was very helpful. Just nothing further. I'd just like to take a ride downtown. I'll lead the way. Well, this would be novel. I haven't been in the back of a car in years. <laughs> a lot of stuff gets stolen from my heart, Stark. Cars, bombs, death rays. Actually, the death ray is accounted for. Mm. It's in Nevada, I believe. Mm. We have reliable information that says that both of these men were in possession of some of their bosses, uh, Mrs. Dewey's, and the 
found her dead. Oh, what a pity. Sounds like you found our thieves. Unless, of course, they were working for your boss. Did you look at that? Yeah, Fred so Tim Thompson hasn't knocked out a single tooth. I want this guy for you. He may be a butler. Well, there's no powerful people. If we don't play this just right, we'll have a dozen lawyers down here by lunch. I can see why he hired you. Smart, cool-headed, extremely loyal. Which is surprising, considering you were charged with treason. Was he now? This looks bad. What happened? Bad to every good man who ever served. And to the fine folks at the office of immigration. A new fun conversation I had with the wife. You know what? Let's get her on the phone. I'll tell her myself. You leave my wife out of this. Mm -hmm. You dragged her into it when you broke the law with your boss. You, you got nothing. He's about to fold. And to admit what? I have my way. Damn near everything. All right, I'll let you take my ship. It's a one-time offer, Carter. Carter! Excuse me, Chief Tooley. I need your signature, sir. She's so quick thinking. I, I don't know what she's doing, though. Mr. Jarvis, I want you to meet. Chief Tooley, I'm afraid I mistakenly took your stolen car report. Oh. oh. Thank you for your hospitality, gentlemen. Unless you're going to arrest and charge me, I'll be on my way. You have no idea how stupid that was. I didn't. Exactly, you didn't think. For the love of people, somebody tell me what I did. Who I cheesed off to have you dumped in my lap. Uh, and you wonder why you're never catching the actual assignments. Yeah, this is the reason. Hey. That cost her a lot. Jarvis better be grateful. And Howard. It's 8 o'clock, Grandma. Come on, tell me about your crappy day. Maybe it'll make me feel better. I'm pretty tired. M maybe some other time. Didn't mean to disturb you. No, you did disturb me. No. I just fine. I know a brush off when I see it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Do you have anything you want to tell me? Not a present, no. Very well. Yes, come with it. You've done this before. I have to follow the wall. So at the time, I was strapped to a very amusing Spaniard. <laughs> Charge of treason, out of context, is not necessarily what it appears to be. Quite so. In fact, my involvement with you and Mr. Stark could, on the face of it, be considered treasonous. Indeed it could. Yeah, so see? You know the details of your past, Mr. Jarvis. I'm sure there's that. a reasonable explanation. You are the brains of the night shift. You ladies have a good night. You know, the passports were a gift from me. The least you could do is cover my shift, you rat bastard. No one cover his shift. Carter. You sweet on her, Susan. No girl's gonna trade in a red, white, and blue shield for an aluminum crutch. Do you know who Steve used Your to be? Was from she liked him then. Me. I was wrong. I need to know. <laughs> Miss Carter. If we're going to be working together, risking our lives together, then I must be able to trust you. Before the war, I served under a general. We traveled a great deal. We were in Budapest when I met Anna. And then the war broke out and things became difficult. She was Jewish. Still is, I'm happy to say. Mm -hmm. The general carried several letters of transit in his safe, any one of which would have ensured her safety. But he refused to sign. You forged his name. And a dishonorable discharge. Mr. Granis couldn't have gone very far with a whole raft full of volatile technology. Not far at all. Mr. Brannis is single. Oh, hey! Starting to see the more, more and more of the similarities between Jarvis and Vision. His love for his wife, True. Vision and Wanda. Oh, it's a rope. Nasty little bugger. What does he do? The constrictor causes involuntary catastrophic muscle contraction bones break, I'm afraid. Mm. It was originally designed for back massage. Mm. Right, let's call it in. Publicly revealing these items won't clear Mr. Stark's name. They will only place you on suspicion mm. along with him. It's Do like you see him. the day I've had? I will call them in, and they will respect me. If you wish to clear Mr. Stark's name, you must do so from the shadows. Call it in. But for God's sake, don't let Krasminski get hold of it. Sousa's working in the office tonight. I can just about stomach him getting the credit. Yeah, if it has to be oh, someone. Uh, uh, Mr. Jarvis, they know your voice now. Well, can he do accents like you can? 
Sousa. Hey, Mac. I uh, got <laughs> a Easter can. For that didn't take long. Oh, shit. Thought you were someone else. <laughs> They're such a great team. Oh. There we go. How do you like that massage? You do? Sure, somebody's not yanking your chain. <laughs> this is it. We got the Stark stuff. Looks like the whole hall. Ease up on that, will you? I don't want to end up inside out. Yeah, no telling. What? what else is on there? Because we answered the phone, it's got handed to us. Yeah, it did. Somebody's wrapping this up like it's Christmas. Is that game working for you? What game? Oh, shit. One on the boat. English broad. Solid right hook. English. Uh oh. What's she look like? Damn it. Oh. You're lucky this is a company car. Hey. Uh oh. <gasps> oh, shit. I didn't expect that. Well, can't have you talking. And he's not gonna talk about Peggy. Jeez. Wow. I mean, I didn't like the guy, but I didn't want him to die. Oh, is that the shift he was trying to get out of, too? Fuck. I knew something was fishy about that anonymous tip. Who does that? A concerned citizen? Concerned citizens call the cops. This guy called us directly. Kuznetsky would still be with us today if it wasn't for Howard Stark. Well, he oh, he's there. got a real yen to get um, Howard. This is because of him. Hmm. It seems personal. One action plans on my desk in one hour. One of my co-workers died today. Jeez, Peg. Do you still have fashion hubs? This. Let me get this jerk his refill and I'll clock out. <sighs> I think that jerk quite fancies you. Shut up, English. You talk too much. Mm. <laughs> that was a real somber ending. Uh, yeah, Peggy definitely feels guilty because she wanted to be the one to call it in and, and kind of break open everything that she's been doing, but Jarvis convinced her not to. I mean, it is a smart thing for her to, to not do yet. Uh, they don't really have enough to clear Howard's name and she'll just look like she's a part of what he's got going on. And I was worried that it was going to come out because Kaminsky heard it, but then he immediately got killed. Uh, that was pretty shocking. I was not expecting that. That was pretty hardcore. And, uh, I mean, it's sad. Like, like she said, he's not somebody that I really was close to. Like, she was not, and he kind of sucked, frankly. But that was a lot. And it seems to have made their their chief guy, whatever his name is, go that much harder into assuming that this is all Howard's doing. So that's not going to be great. But we did get some backstory with Jarvis, which was interesting. As soon as they said treason, I was like, well, there's got to be some explanation for this because like they likened what Peggy is doing now, this could seem really bad what she's doing, but she's doing it for the right reasons. And yes, Jarvis forged a signature of a very high, what, a, a general? Um, so yeah, you're not supposed to do that, but he was doing it for his love. And uh, yeah, I don't think he regrets it or wouldn't do it again, but he suffered the consequences. He got discharged, but Howard helped him get the charges dropped or, you know, cleared his name as much as he could. And I think that's probably a big reason why he's so loyal to Howard. So I like getting that depth with Jarvis and then him coming in and helping Peggy so much as he does. I think he gave Peggy the right advice. I think it's their right that they should have left and just called it in. Maybe they should have just called the police and not directly the SSR because that definitely made them more suspicious. But, I mean, if they had waited around, they, they might have been the ones that were killed. So, it sucks, but... 
I think even though he got killed, the witness got killed, I think they still got the weaponry or whatever all was on that ship or so, you know, those are things that are not in someone else's hands. So a good was done here, but just a, just a shame that that guy got killed out of all of this. So yeah, um, the other stuff with like the beginning of the episode was really fun, assuming it's someone there to attack Peggy, but it's just someone trying to sneak in. That lady runs the tight ship and immediately kicked the woman out who had the guy sneak in and has already replaced her. So you know Peggy just has to be on her P's and Q's, but if anybody's gonna be doing some shady dealings, it's Peggy. So, however that lady found that out, Peggy's going to have to outsmart her. I mean, I'm sure she's very capable of doing so, but that lady's probably got eyes in the back of her head. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy living situation. And then she had Angie, who just wanted to, you know, have a night in and talk about their days. But it, she caught Peggy at the wrong time. And we're, Angie really s sulked about that. Um, but... Peggy is busy, you know, a lot of the time. She's got a lot going on. So hopefully Angie can understand that. And especially with Peggy going there to her at the end at her job to apologize, mea culpa, and wanting to open up to her. I think it proved to Angie that it was just an outlier type thing. She's not trying to push her away or give her the brush off. It was just the wrong time. So I, I like their friendship. I think Angie's fun, but she she was a little little too uh, judgmental about the situation too fast. But yeah, this episode definitely gave weight to everything that's happen, happening with someone dying like this. It really ups the stakes a little bit, shows you that this is really serious and uh, Peggy is in danger and, you know, she's often sneaking around doing these things. So she's at the forefront of that danger. But it's it's really good that Jarvis was there because she was getting like choked and everything. So she needs to continue to have him. So when she went down for him, like made it look like she fucked up the, I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but like her taking the, the report made Jarvis be able to leave. I don't know. They just were really upset with her about that. So it made her look unprofessional and uh, it's definitely something she was trying to make up for. I think that's why she was so ready to like come clean about everything so she could like show them how good she is and her worth. And I, and I think that was the reason they did that for Jarvis to say, no, actually, we're not ready to do all that yet. Um, but I'll, I definitely am looking forward to the day that they understand just what they have because with him, the their boss being like oh you see why you don't get put on anything like this is probably the one the only time that you could say she was not good at her job or whatever it's not why she hasn't been put on anything and you know it so when the day comes that it that they know how good she is i, I would love to see that and considering we know she starts up shield and gets everything like her reputation grows to enormous heights so i'm just looking forward to that for her even if that's not something we actually have time to get into with this show but just knowing it makes it better they so mentioned a little bit with susa maybe having feelings for Peggy and I, I definitely think that that's what they're setting up. He's such a little parallel of, of Steve. Like he's definitely her type. I would say someone who's just really good hearted and, um, has a lot to prove. And, uh, I think that they may go there with that. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I had a good time. This was sad though, you know, but I think we'll count it as an overall win to to find those weapons to you know go and to to think that you know what did they do after they tunneled in that I mean the the cargo was right there so I'm glad she got that win even though there were some pretty devastating endings of all that but yeah good episode so thanks for watching guys I'll be back soon.